Hello. 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 Excuse me. Does your dog bite? No. Hello, little doggy. I thought you said your dog does not bite. That is not my dog. You don't need a little bell ringing to understand these points. Hello there. I am Marco Grouch, Chief Economist here at Acme Incorporated. And today I would like to talk to you about the international debt crisis. Yeah, the global financial crisis, the global socioeconomic mega crisis, whatever you want to call it, it is ultimately about debt. You know, like uh, right now, Greece owes so much money to so many other countries and so many other investors and banks and you name it, it's really a pain in the neck. When you do that, you're speculating on the market. <laughs> But we discovered just the other day something that you rich families failed to tell us. Ha! Yep, they found out something else. We understand that you rich families sold promissory notes to other families if they would contribute as an investment to the entire loan. That is to say, if those other families who don't have really, or not very rich, would give that extra food, whatever, extra stuff, um, then these rich guys would give them later on, once they got their interest, they would give them a share of the interest, right? And um, so basically, uh, <clears throat> these not so rich people were actually giving. You don't need a little bell. <laughs> you can't... Three wise persons. <clears throat> it's irrelevant whether they were male or female. <sighs> that's kind of corrupt, isn't it? <laughs> you know, that's deceitful. And they just do whatever you want, and there are no consequences. Of course, there's going to be consequences. If I join the game and make lots of money, if I'm lucky, uh, in the markets, I may be hurting other people by ourselves without your help than be white males like So they didn't use the word black so they had a different word. They used white males. It's a long story, but basically they've forgotten the word black males and they somehow remembered it as white. But they were charged even more interest uh, than the other ones. In the previous ones. Well, why? Because the rich figured, hey, you know, I'm taking a risk here, right? So I want to make sure that I even get even more money for my risk. You know, up and up and up and up. And we all know where that led to, right? They should not have taken out the loans if they did not intend to pay them back, they argued. Parents and their parents before them and so on worked very hard to make us rich. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, you know, oh, they had expected, you know, some compromise. So they went and had another heated little argument amongst themselves in the corner. If you try to force us to do these things, we will simply pack up and leave the village and find another village that can use our generous loans. Yep, they threatened to leave the village, take their wealth, and use it somewhere else to basically bilk people out of their lives. Okay, so had all these regulations put in effect so that it wouldn't happen again. But what happened? Within 30, 40 years after that, they started to dismantle these regulations because they were saying that those reg the regulations were actually what was slowing the progress of the economy. Yeah, right. Like as if telling your children to watch how they spend their money is a bad idea. No, 
kind of corruption, the kind of um, hoodwinking, the kind of shell games, the kind of pyramid schemes, the kind of, you name it, you know, it's just terrible, <clears throat> uh, deceitful things uh, that have been going on. We've got to put an end to this. That's why after the first depression, the Great Depression, right, the first big one, I'm sorry, the Great Depression, regulations, restrictions, and all that are essential for actually the benefit of everybody, including most and foremost, the rich. So if the rich want to have a safe world, they better start realizing that when the world markets get screwy, they should pay the price, not the little guy. To ask to beg for help. Yep, that's right. It's what you're saying, basically. You know, you're saying instead of X number of people dying, only half X number of people, 50% of those people will die of malnutrition and suffering. And we can't accept that kind of reasoning. And if it's an individual in society and they lose it all or almost all of it and they owe money, they're then in trouble. Why? It's not fair. And basically, you know, and we're not talking about here that you go to your neighbor and without their knowledge and without their consent, you take something from them like a lawnmower or you take their piano without their knowledge and consent. And then and then later on, say that was a, I, I took it on a loan and I'm sorry, somebody stole it from my house. That's theft. If you take something from somebody without their uh, knowledge and consent, that is simply theft. Right. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about loans. Now, here's my policy. I never give anything to anybody if I can't afford to say, say goodbye to it. Basically, when I've given a loan to anybody, I've said, hey, if you can repay me, great. And if you can help me out with my own projects later on, in addition to paying back, even better. But if you can't, I understand. And so I'm giving this to you as a friendly loan. But if you can't pay it back, I understand. It's very simple, you know. <laughs> Then came another year of drought. Actually, not just another year of drought. Then came years of drought. And this is when things became very unstable, uh, dangerous, and scary. And we're not talking about, you know, investing in a uh, stocks and bonds uh, on Wall Street in terms of some companies that may actually have a new invention and product that can help humanity. I mean, even there, there are problems, but we're talking about classical real estate speculation. And, you know, the thing is that rich people, they love to make you feel bad about being poor. They say you've got a mental problem. You're not healthy. You're not normal if you're not willing to be as aggressive and ruthless as they are. Well, I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm me. I'm, 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 I'm a happy-go-lucky guy and uh, I just happen to study economics. Okay, so... The point I wanted to make today is not so much about real estate speculation and debts involved in that. I wanted to talk a little bit about what I consider to be a very important point. You see, the, the, the problem with our debt crisis is that we're forgetting an ancient lesson. And that is, well, in order to explain that to you, let me tell you this story, okay? There was a small village... <laughs> You don't need a little bell ringing to understand these points. Here we go, running around the house with that crazy old mouse.